Can I turn it more this way a little? It's a fine. Turning it more this way a little. Hi everybody, I'm just fixing my camera. Trying to get it a little bit better view here. <clears throat> never see anything on here who's coming on or not I can't tell how many are on though is there any way for me to tell oh it's all screen hi if you're just coming in say hi I know it's been a while a couple weeks I'm just hoping everybody got my message that I would be on this evening. Hi, Nana. How are you? I'm excited to be back and crafting with you guys. It's been two weeks. Two weeks I haven't been on. I had a um, craft show. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Welcome. You're from Maine. Nice. How's the weather there? I always wanted to go to Maine. Never made it there. It's your first time here? Well, welcome. Welcome. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes to see who else pops in. I know um, I get some people that pop in a little bit later than seven, so I just want to give it a couple minutes. I'm going to be crafting um, a laser kit that I made with my laser cutter. I do a lot of those now. And um, it's we're gonna make a door sign and it's a Highland cow. I don't know if you guys like farmhouse, but I love farmhouse. Rainy and cold, oh, that stinks. It's not supposed to be like this right now. We're in spring. It's supposed to be beautiful out, you know? Or at least start getting beautiful out, right? I know it's been cold. I'm originally from upstate New York and my sister lives up there, still my family. And they said that, you know, there was a couple of days where some snow fell. I'm like, oh no, it's cold. Oh, you're in Missouri? In that Missouri? Hi, Constance. Hi, Richmond, Virginia. Hello. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's sunny and breezy there. Well, at least it's sunny, right? Sunny is the best thing. How is it in Missouri? Not, how is it in Missouri? I'm sure it's probably cold still, right? I just wish that it would just warm up for you guys. I'm in Florida, so I can't complain. <laughs> um, it's just been really windy here, though. Usually it's not that windy here in Florida, but it's been very, very windy. Yes, it's cold. See, I figure. Well, I'm going to get started. If anybody popped in on Facebook, say hi. Let me know you're here. Um, I would love to say hello to you. Can you move in? <laughs> sure, come on down. You didn't have spring last year. Oh, I know. Sometimes it goes like right from winter to basically summer. I know. I lived in Buffalo, so we always had terrible, terrible springs. But yes, I understand. Okay, so today I am going to be crafting, like I said, one of my laser kits. And I'm going to do a Highland cow. And I love this cow, you guys. I love Highland cows. I'm a huge cow fan. I love farmhouse, rustic. You guys know if you've been here before. And I have this little, um, I don't want to lose this little piece. But I have this. It says, hey, y'all. It's the little cow tag. And I think that's super cool with it. And it just attaches to the ear. And then I just have this little round. Um, now, my rounds, I usually get them at um, Hobby Lobby. But pretty soon, I'm going to be cutting my own rounds because I'm getting a new laser cutter. So I'm super excited about that. But this kit will be available in my Etsy shop. In my Etsy shop, you will find the link 
to it. Like if you want to craft your own, that's what I make is a craft kit for you guys. So if you want to craft your own, you just go into my Etsy shop and you will see on Facebook, they could see the link, but here on YouTube, you can also, um, I'll have the link in the description box for you guys. So you also can get one of these if you want to and make your own. So tonight what I'm going to do is I am going to first, I'm going to start with this guy. So he comes in two pieces and then they both go, it's kind of like a 3D type of effect. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to not paint first. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some scrapbook paper and put it on here. So we're going to kind of like, and when I used to do scrapbooking, it used to be called backing my file. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to put the scrapbook paper behind this so it looks like this is painted. Now, if you don't have the right color scrapbook paper, then all you have to do is um, paint it. You can paint it any color you want. So you can make the cow any color you want. So I have this really cool scrapbook paper. Now, this is a Tim Holtz. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but it's Tim Holtz. Um, I use a lot of his stamping Distress Oxide because I love this. Highland Cows, yay, you love them? Me too. Me too, Stephanie. I love them. Um, oh, you can't wait to move to warmer state. Oh, you have, okay, family in New York. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, my mom moved here when she retired, so I followed her. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to use this scrapbook paper. I think it's super cool. What do you guys think? I love this scrapbook paper. It's by Tim Holt. Um, it's old scrapbook paper though, so I don't know if you're going to be able to find it, but, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace it out with a pencil and then cut it out and I'm going to make sure I cut where the nose is too, so that, you know, you still want to see the nose area of the cow, but I love Highland cows. They're my favorite. Highland cows are my favorite and I love, um, Farmhouse and Rustic Decor, if you're new here. And I also love um, vintage, anything vintage. I love it. And I also like, um, I love sunflowers. Anybody else love sunflowers? And I think sunflowers can be anytime. It doesn't have to just be fall, right? You can use them in the summer and in the spring. And I just love my sunflowers. So we're going to put some sunflowers on this little guy too. Because I if today I'm not wearing a shirt, which is surprising. I'm not wearing a shirt that has sunflowers or a Highland cow on it. Because I have a lot of them that I purchased because I just love them so much. But um, yeah. So now the horn part, this part that's going to be sticking out, I'm just going to do this brown. Probably like a, like a light brown. Like a khaki color, probably. But first, we're going to cut this out. So is anybody uh, doing anything exciting this weekend? I'm cleaning my garage. <laughs> I have to clean my garage this weekend. Me and my husband and my older son are getting in there, and we're going to clean it up because I have a lot of stuff in there that I... It's just everywhere. It's just a mess. I just end up putting everything in the garage. Do you guys do that? It's like crazy how much stuff. And I do a lot of crafting. So, of course, you know, not only do I have stuff in my craft room everywhere, <laughs> but I also have stuff, you know. In my Hello, Rosemary. Hi, welcome. Um, we're making a Highland Cow sign that says, hey, y'all. Really Southern. And um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, my craft room's a mess and so is my garage. I kind of took it over from my husband. So he, that used to be his man cave and I kind of moved on in. <laughs> so he doesn't appreciate that, but he let me do it. You know, he lets me do what I want, which is good. He's a good guy. So once we get this cut out, now this doesn't have to be perfect because there's still going to be like a little bit of edge um, over it. So we're not going to have to, I just want to make sure that I'm cutting this. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go straight across. I want to make sure I'm not cutting anything off. I'm not supposed to, because I don't have another piece of this paper. 
So I don't want to mess that up. So I think I'm going to go, I think I am going to go up. I am going to do the horns because I don't want to mess that up. And I think this will look cool on the horns too. So we're just going to go with it. Now here in Florida, it's a really nice day. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear that. <laughs> it is very nice out here today. Um, but it's been, like I said, it's been really windy. And I'm okay, as long as it's warm. Because we have had quite a few cold spells here lately. More than, like I've been here about 17 years now. And we've had a lot more cold here than we have ever had. Um, it's been absolutely terrible. So, but not as bad as it is up north. So, I'm not going to complain. Sorry, I know this is the boring part, watching me cut out something, right? Did anybody else pop in, say hi? I would love to welcome you. I've really missed not doing my lives. I really love doing it. I love chatting with you guys and crafting. It's super fun. You know, especially when you have other people on here that enjoy crafting too. So I really like doing this. And I haven't been doing it long. So this is like only like, I think my seventh live. So I haven't been doing it very long, but I enjoy it. It's fun. But you could share this video, too, if you like, with friends or family. Let them know, you know, when I do lives, too, because the more the merrier, as they say. I love to have more people pop in, say hi. My mom usually watches me on Facebook. She'll watch me. And some other of my family members come in, too, and say hi. But I know with the weather getting warmer out here, I know when the weather starts getting warmer out and it starts staying laid out longer, you know, I'm not going to have as many people. <laughs> but I'm hoping that um, I could do more in the summer um, when the kids are out of school and stuff. I could do more lives during the week. I'd like to do another live during the week for you guys. I do two a week instead of just one. Okay. So I'm going to just Mod Podge this. You can use um, any glue you want, but I'm going to Mod Podge it down onto the back of the cow. And I'm just using regular Mod Podge, just the Mod Podge. And I always use one of these um, Sponge Dollar Tree to put my Mod Podge on, but I gotta make sure that I'm gonna make sure I pierce the little holes for the nose and also the um, part where the tag goes on, because I'll show you how I'm gonna make it look like the tag's connected to the ear. Ugh. No fuzzies. I don't know why I get these fuzzies in here all the time. In my craft room, I find them everywhere. And I think they're for my dogs. <laughs> Even though my one dog, both two of my dogs don't um, shed. So, and the one does, because my husband's very allergic to dander on the dogs, the dandruff. So we can't have any dogs that like have a lot of dander or have a lot of shedding. Okay, so now that I got my mop hedge down, and I keep getting all these little fuzzies. Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth this out now on top. Get it lined up right. Now I put a lot down because this, I wanna make sure that it doesn't bubble. You can also, um, I've used like hot irons before like a mini iron 
and you just put a piece of parchment paper over the top and that helps smooth it out as well so that it doesn't bubble. But we're gonna be putting that other piece on top of this. So I'm not too concerned about it doing that. But that's what it looks like. And I think that's gonna be a nice color for underneath the cow. Because on the top part, I'm gonna do a darker color. This way it kind of stands out a little bit. So now we can get to the painting. So I'm gonna put that aside to dry. And I'm gonna use Burnt Ombre. I love using this, you guys, my favorite paint um, for the actual other piece of the cow. And then for the round, I'm going to do it with, um, with the Burnt Ombre first, and then I'm gonna do a dry brush on top with the Plaster Paint by Waverly, which I absolutely love that paint. And a trick that I could tell you guys is that when you put on a dark paint, like a burnt ombre color, you can use a baby wipe. And if you wipe it with the baby wipe, put some on the baby wipe and just smudge it on, you're going to get the same effect as a stain. Okay. It'll make it really light and it'll make it look like it's stained. And that's what I like doing. So um, I know you guys see most of the time, if you've been here before, I know you guys know I like to do the chippy look, but this time I'm not doing the chippy look. Hi, mom. My mom's on now, guys. And her little dog, she has a, she has a Shih Tzu and she's not doing good right now. So say some prayers for her. She's going to the doctors tomorrow and we're praying that she has kidney stones. So we're praying that she does good and that she only needs medicine. And not like anything else. But she's been having them for a long time. She's 11 years old, the poor thing. She's getting old. So like I said, I'm just like wiping. I'm just dipping, you know, the um, wipe, baby wipe in the paint. And then I'm just smudging it on the surface. And it looks like a stain. It looks really cool. So if you don't have stain, this is a good way to do it. Or you could water down paint as well. That's another way that you can get a stain. But these rounds from um, Hobby Lobby, I like using them a lot for my crafting. They have thicker ones and they have thinner ones. These are the thinner ones. And I think you get like five in a package. I always get them when they're on sale, though. You got to always... Get everything on sale, guys. That's what I do. Everything on sale. <laughs> I get um five of them in a pack, and then you get 40% off. So when they have the 40% off the wood stuff, that's when I usually pick mine up. And I'm always buying them because I know I'm gonna use them. So once I do this side, then we're gonna do the other side. Because I always do front and back. Make sure I do both sides. I'm just going to dry this real quick. Yes, Mom, I'll bring you for it. Anybody else just pop in? Say hi. This will dry really quick, too, because we did it with the baby wipe, so it's not really thick. Now, the only thing is when you buy the um, rounds from Hobby Lobby, you have to put your own holes in it, or you could staple a hanger on them. Um, you can either put the holes in yourself, drill them, or whatever. If you have a crocodile, you can use that. Or you could just um, also just uh, staple. But be careful, because the ones that are thin, the staple goes right through. So that's the only thing you got to be careful about because you don't want it to go through the other side. I put holes in mine because I have a crocodile that I can use. I was going to do the staple. I got a new staple gun and the staple gun is still going through thin wood. So I don't know. I need to get some kind of staples that don't. I think I might have to try and use a regular stapler when you're using thin wood. 
So I'm just doing the back and then I'm gonna get around the edges of the round. And then we can paint the other stuff. I'm trying to get around the edges now, but I don't wanna get like a um, splinter because I could feel it's rough around the edges. So I gotta sand it. Anybody else just come in? Get a little bit more paint. I think I put a hole in the wipey. It's all over my fingers now. Yep, I did. <laughs> I always do that because I rub too hard. Or the wood is like really rough on the edges, so I gotta definitely sand it. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry this side and then try to get around, actually try to get around the edges now. On this side. Okay, there we go. I think I got it all. Got to be careful too with these thin rounds because if you dry them too much, what happens is sometimes the wood will warp, get warped and it, you know, bends a little bit. So sometimes like I will glue two of them together when I need to. And I should have put a glove on because I just got my nails done and I have paint all over. And I'm trying not to do that again. Because <laughs> the last time I went and got my nails done, she was like, what did you do? And I'm like, I paint. And it's always when I'm doing the, um, like this type of work that I get it all over me. And I, I have to learn to put gloves on, but I just don't. I'm just too much getting into what I'm doing that I just don't even, I forget to do it. All right, so after I dry this, then we're just gonna do the little cow. I love doing signs like this. I actually just did a craft fair and I did pretty good. I sold quite a few of these rounds. I had bee rounds um, with the beehive and the bees. Um, I did lemons. That was another big one. And also farmhouse like this with the cow. And I sold those. Those did really, really well. So everybody likes using these as door hangers. I like this kind of door hanger, actually, on my door. And this type of door hanger, you can leave up a long time. I mean, it could stay up for spring. You can even leave it up for fall because there's some flowers that I'm going to put on it. So it's really a great idea because it's going to use it for a long time. Sorry, I'm just making sure it's dry. And I missed a spot. Oh, yeah, I, think that's good. I think that's good. Just want to make sure that all this is clean. And then. So before I do the dry brush on top of here, or actually I'm going to do the dry brush first. So I'm using the Plaster Paint by Waverly. Um, it's a chalk paint. And I use this, I use these colors together a lot. But I'm just going to do a dry brush. So basically um, what it is, is I'm just going to dip my brush in the paint. And then I'm just going to kind of like wipe it on my mat here, back and forth like that. And then I'm going to just kind of like lightly go across my board 
And you could do this as light or as dark as you want to dry brush it, depending on your taste and what you like. Like I always say, you do you. I'm just here for, you know, to give you some ideas. So I wanna go a little bit heavier because I don't wanna see a lot of the background dark um, cause I'm gonna go darker with the cow. So I'm gonna go over it a little bit darker and I just want a little bit of that brown peeking through. See, I'm not, I'm not going like this anymore on the side because I want to get it a little bit darker. And these colors are so neutral that, you know, it's, it's really good. I mean, and then you'll have the pops of the yellow from the sunflowers, which is super, super pretty. Or you can use any flower. I mean, if you like whatever flower you want to use, you can use on this. Hello, Darlene. Welcome. Yeah, I miss not being here too. I wasn't here for two weeks, so you didn't miss anything. All I know is I love seeing pictures of your beautiful granddaughter. She is adorable. She is the cutest thing ever. We're making a Highland cow, Darlene. Um, I don't know if you like cows, but I love Highland cows. They're one of my favorite um, things to craft. So I'm just gonna do a little bit darker around the edges. I'm trying to get it like darker in some spots and then lighter in others. I don't want too much of the brown showing, just a little bit. And then if you do too much, you can always go back and um, go over it with the brown. I mean, just make sure it's dry though, because you don't want to mix your paints, because then it'll look muddy. Yeah, she's a cutie. She really is. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the back of this as well because I like to have everything look done. So once I do the front here, I'll flip it over, do the back. The paint should dry for us. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Tom. <laughs> I try. I try. I love doing this, though. This is my favorite thing to do with craft. It's my serenity. But sometimes I get a little too much into it. But that's okay. But I had a craft show last week, and I did really well, darling. So, I mean, not really well. I did okay. I did okay. It wasn't that much foot traffic, so. I wish there was more. I don't think it was advertised enough here in Daytona. But I have another one on the 27th, and it's in um, Port Orange. So I'm hoping that one will have a little bit more traffic, but, you know, Port Orange. The last time I went and did a craft show in Port Orange, Florida, it wasn't that great. There wasn't a lot of traffic at all, but that was a couple years ago. So I'm hoping that, you know, it'll be a little bit better this time. I like doing craft shows. They're fun. 
because you get to meet a lot of people, a lot of different crafters, see what they do, get ideas from them. So it's super fun. Uh, the Tanger one is actually on May 11th. So I will be at the Tanger outlet on May 11th. That's, that's a good one. A lot of people come to that one. And plus you get a lot of tourists that come. I always do really well at the Tanger. So um, I'm definitely doing that one. And then I don't do any in the summer because it's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot here in the summer. I can't be underneath no tent for that long. It, it, it's just too much. And a lot of the other crafters that actually do some did some in the summer, and they said they'll never do it again. It was just too hot. And I just can't. I like the warm, but I don't like it when it's too hot. When it's too hot, I like to be near a pool or an air conditioning. Because my body can't take the heat. <laughs> too much heat. And I don't like when it's humid. I don't like that either. Too much humidity is not good. And I don't know, when is Mother's Day? Does anybody know? Is it the second Sunday in May or the third? I never remember. Because I was wondering if the crash was on May 11th. Is it that weekend that it's Mother's Day? Is it that Sunday? I was just wondering. Because I can make Mother's Day stuff too and bring it to the crash show. I have some really, really pretty roses that say mom that were laser cut out that are in my Etsy shop too for Mother's Day. And they're really pretty. Well, really, you can give them to your mom anytime. <laughs> it doesn't have to be just Mother's Day. You can do it anytime. I'm just going to do this part a little bit darker. I know this is the back of it, but... I still like the back to look nice, even though it's against the door <laughs> and you're really not going to see it. But for me, I would just know and it would bother me. So I always like to make sure that everything's done. And I think that's good. May 12th, so it is. It's the day before Mother's Day. Wow. Well, I guess I could bring a couple Mother's Day stuff if somebody is like last minute shopping. Because a lot of people do last minute shopping for Mother's Day, so. Sorry, guys. I know this is the boring part is watching the paint and wa waiting for it to dry. But I really want to make sure it's dry before I flip it over and then it's all smudged. <laughs> you don't want that. And I know as soon as I lift it up, see, it's still tacky. Still tacky. I'm going to sand it a little bit, too, and smooth it out.
Okay, I think that's good. Yep, I'm getting paint all over me. Okay, I just want to wipe this a little. The edges here. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do... Try this a little bit on the end. Trying to get it around the edges so it's dry because it's still with wet. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the cow. So what I'm going to do is... Let me wipe my hands first a little bit because I got tons of plaster paint on me. Oh, yeah, great. Yes, come visit. I will be there. I don't know what spot I'm in yet, so um, I can let you know when I find out. <laughs> You're not going to know anyways, but I'll tell you what I'm near, like what store I'm near. Um, this way you'll know where I'm at so you can look for me. Because they usually let us know our spot like a week before, so I'll know like what store I'm near. A lot of the times I've been near J. Crew, um, in Vera Bradley. Two times actually, I was in right in front of there. Which Vera Bradley, not a good idea, because I love that store. But <laughs> I'm gonna stay away. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna paint the little cow. Um with the um, burnt amber paint as well, because I want it like two, you know, because the Highland cow is brown and like a light brown. They're like really pretty and they have a little bit of hair on them. So I love that part. So I'm just using a sponge that I cut up from the Tower Tree to paint this. Um, it just dry, it's just easier. The paint dries faster and you don't get a lot of the brush strokes. And when you're doing a laser cut piece like this, it's a lot easier to get the paint around without making like a glob of paint somewhere. So, cause I don't want, you know, too much paint. I just want just enough. But yeah, Darlene, I do, um, I do other door hangers too. Like I do, I do a lot of bees and um, lemons. I don't know if you're into that decor, but it's really popular. So that's the one I do a lot of because everybody likes them. And my last craft show that I just did, I sold quite a few. Um, and I also sold one. I did a sign with a little pig on it. It was so cute. And I sold it. So I was like, oh my God, which I was shocked because, well, I know a lot of people like the cows, but not many, you know, actually want the pig on their door, but they like the cow or like they'll do the chicken. I have one, the chicken that says, welcome to our coop. Super cute. But I like this one because it says, hey, y'all. And I'm only doing one coat on the top because I want some of that um, uh, wood to show through. I like the wood, you know, to peek through a little bit. And with the burnt amber, when you use a sponge and you sponge paint it, you can see the wood grain a little bit. So that's what I like. So it looks really rustic. Yeah. My camera's over here now, so like I'm, I'm all confused. So sorry if I'm looking in the wrong direction. Okay. So he's all done. So I'm going to put him aside. And I'm going to do, put him over here. Yeah, don't fall. And I'm going to paint the little um, cow tag, which I think is so cute. And then the hey y'all. And the hey y'all I'm going to do um, with the darker brown. And then the actual, actually the tag I'm going to do with the darker brown color. 
and then the um, hay I'll, I'll do with the plaster paint. So kind of everything goes together. And these are like really easy to paint, these little pieces. It dries really fast, super fast. And now I'm going to do the plaster. Actually, I think I'm gonna use a paintbrush for it. I don't know. Do I wanna use a paintbrush? Yeah, I think I'm going to use a paintbrush for this because they're such tiny pieces. So I wanna make sure. This one tiny piece, I don't know how I'm going to get it on there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is really cute. I love this idea. I'm actually going to put this on my door. <laughs> I like the Highland Cow on my door. I actually have a flag that has the Highland Cow on it with the um, uh, sunflowers. So I'm going to put that on my little flag, and then I'm going to put this on my door too. Because my front of my house, I have a little porch area. Not big, it's small, but it's a little, you know, over cover, covered porch area that I have. And I'm going to um, decorate it with like farmhouse. I have like a little door that's super cute with a, um, it looks like a barn door. And I decorated that and I put a little wreath like hanging on the little barn door, which was super cute. I'll have to take a picture of the front of it and like put it, post it on my Facebook group so you guys could see it. Super cute. Only thing is right now it's been so windy here, like I've been saying, that I have to keep taking my stuff in because it's blowing off of my porch. It's blowing all over the place and I'm afraid it's going to blow away. It's like, it's been so windy here. But I think it's been windy everywhere, to be honest. Okay, this little piece is like, I need tweezers. <laughs> it's like the little comma. Oh my God. Okay. I think it would have been easier if I would have used the sponge. Ugh. Okay. I think that's good going to dry the words really quick. See, it's going to keep on over. And the only thing I don't like is that you get the paint in between the letters and it gumps up in this, like, the center of them. I don't like that. So I use like a skewer to get it so that it looks nicer. Okay. So there's our letters. Everything's painted. So now we got to do is put this together. Yay. We're all done painting. Not that I don't like painting. I do. There's a farm right up the road from you. It has Highland cows. Oh my gosh. I've never actually seen one, like a real one. I've never seen one. I would love to be able to see one. Oh my God, they have some babies. Oh my God, I'm in love. I would absolutely love to see that. I know people that actually want one as a pet. I don't think that that's a good idea. You know, unless you have a farm, then that's different, but. You know, I don't think it's something like you should have in your house, right? <laughs> Do you guys agree with me? Like, that's crazy. They are so cute. I love them. They're adorable. So what I thought about doing with the tag, let me know what you guys think. 
I was thinking about making it rusty looking, like a rusty tag, or should I just leave it brown? What do you guys think? Tell me what you think. Because I can make it look rusty, which is super fun to do too. I do that a lot. <laughs> or I can just leave it plain. I could just leave it brown. But I think I want to put just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And all I'm going to do is use a little bit of Mod Podge and some cinnamon. Rusty. Yeah. See, Stephanie? You're thinking like me. That's what I like. Rusty. Definitely. So I'm going to cut a little piece of my tiny piece of my styrofoam that I keep using. My little. And I'm going to get it wet with the Mod Podge. I'm just going to dab a little bit in like certain areas, like maybe a little bit in the corners, like not a lot because the cinnamon's going to stick really good to this. And I'm just going to dab it and then I'm going to sprinkle the cinnamon and this makes it smell really good too because it smells like cinnamon, you guys. <laughs> I like doing that. And then usually when I do it on the brown like this, I usually dab it with some more brown paint, just a little bit, and that kind of like seals it in. And then whatever extras on here that doesn't catch on the Mod Podge or the paint will just blow off when I dry it. But this gives it a really cool effect, and it's super fun. <laughs> I love doing this technique. But I like the rusty look. And it smells really good right now, the cinnamon. Okay. So there it is, all rusty. Does it look good? I like it. I love the rusty look, you guys. I love that look. Okay. So now we're going to put it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my little letters on here and get that out of the way and hopefully not burn my fingers because I always do. These tiny words, when you try to put the glue on them, it's like ugh, I get nervous because I always burn my finger. So I try to be really careful. But you also got to be really fast because the glue dries so quick that if you're not fast, then you're going to have glue stuck everywhere. So I'm going to glue down the hay and then the y'all. This little tiny one is going to like, going to be so hard for me to do. Oh my God, I wish I lived near you. I want to come there just to see the cows. <laughs> They're your favorite cow now too. I know, right? Oh, they're so adorable. I just love all the hair on them. My living room has, um, I have a lot of uh, Highland cows. Pictures from um, Hobby Lobby that I got. Actually, I got them on sale at Hobby Lobby when it was, they were getting rid of a lot of their spring from last year, which I'm like, why are they getting rid of this stuff? It's so nice. Come on up. <laughs> okay. I really, I really want to see the cows. I don't see cows here. That I mean, there's cows here, but not, I haven't seen a Highland cow. Like I see just the regular cows and I see like um, the um, like horses and you know, that stuff. But I don't see, I don't know, not here in Florida, I mean, unless there's somewhere else like, like I'm thinking like in the center of the state maybe. But there's our tag, isn't it cute? Hey, y'all. I love it. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of this. Well, no, actually, it's fine. 
And now we're going to put our cow on here. But first, I got to get the paint out of this hole because I'm going to be putting a hanger on here. And it's going to not go through. There we go. Okay. So I got to glue this together first, the two cows together, like that. And I think that looks really good. I like the contrast of the two colors. I think it was perfect because I wanted it to be lighter underneath. The only thing is that I got to pierce. I have this little like piercing tool that I use all the time for the hole for the tag and also the little nose. So I'm just going to like punch a little piece here and hope that I don't rip the paper because I don't want to do that much. I just want it to be a little bit. And it worked. Just got to be really careful because once I glue it down, it'll be perfect. I'm trying to go really easy. There we go. There we go. Feels like there's more. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm just going to get the little hole where the thing goes. And I'm going to put a piece of rusty wire on here to attach it and then glue it down too, of course. But I want it to look like it's attached with a rusty wire to go kind of with the tag. <laughs> I think he's getting stuck. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so now we can glue it together. And I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of wood glue. And I use the wood super glue from Dollar Tree. That's what I always use. Cause I just think it works so good. But you can use any wood glue that you have. I mean, the uh, Gorilla Glue works great. I use that too. But I like to use a mixture of both. But being that we're doing it on paper, it should stick pretty good. And not come apart. It's just that I have to go so fast. Because if I don't... It's not going to stick right. And then I get glue everywhere. The only thing I hate is when I'm doing this, I think, oh my God, am I gonna run out of glue in my glue gun? And then I gotta hurry up and put the glue, <laughs> put the glue in there. And then by that time, everything's dry. Okay. And I always drop it or do something silly like that. There we go. It's perfect. And whenever I get like glops of glue somewhere, I just use my um my little pick that I just used to pierce the holes to get the glue out. See, like I could see a little bit of glue here. So all I do is use this. And I just like pick it out because once it dries, it'll pull right out like that. See, I pulled it right out. I don't know if you guys could tell, but it's getting dark in here. Oh my goodness. Hang on guys. I need to turn a light on. Is that better? Can you see me now? <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Okay. So I think that was the only piece I had to do. All right. So there's the cow. I think he's cute. He's cute. Okay, so now we're gonna put him here and then we're gonna put the tag right there. And the tag, I'm gonna have to like put something under it to like elevate it a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. But first I'm gonna use a piece of rusty wire and I get my rusty wire on um, at, in the Etsy shop. I get it on Etsy. Um, 
they always have it on there. Somebody's always selling Rusty Wire, so. You're going to bring them to me? <laughs> oh, thank you. He is cute, isn't he? I just love him. All right, so this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this wire in here. And I'm just going to connect it. And I don't want too much wire because I want to make sure that my cow is going to hang down right. So I'm just going to like twist it on here. The wire like that. And then I'm just going to kind of like have it because I'm still going to glue it down tight. I just want to make it look like it's attached to a wire, to a rusty wire like that. to make it look a little more interesting, I guess. Okay, so I wanna make sure I get this in the middle. That's the only thing is sometimes I don't get these in the middle. So now I'm gonna glue this down first so I can glue down the whole piece together. That'll just make it much easier. I'm gonna need more glue. I knew I was running low, see? And I'm just gonna glue it on the side here like so. So it stays. I'm actually gonna bring it out more. Not too much glue. And I got a little carried away with the glue and the glue clapped out. There we go. Should have waited till it dried. There it goes. <laughs> I'm like, come on, please. Okay. I always oops out too much glue sometimes. I get carried away with it. Okay, so now we're gonna glue the whole thing down and then I'm gonna make a cute like little um, hanger on the top. It's going to kind of make it pop a little with some of the um, yellow from the flowers. So now we're going to glue the whole piece down. And I'm going to use the same thing, both glues, the wood glue and also the hot glue. And I'm probably going to use the thicker hot glue. And make sure I get it in the center. There we go. Perfect. I like when things go perfect. But believe me, I've had catastrophes with, uh, <laughs> with doing this. So there it is so far. What do you guys think? Cute. All right, now we're gonna put a little hanger on the top. Now I already had some beads that I already painted. So I'm gonna use those and they match perfectly. They were from another um, door hanger that I had that I didn't end up using. So um, I'm just gonna, I'm actually using, this is a uh, jute twine from another, from a Dollar Tree um, round, you know, like the wood rounds that you get from the Dollar Tree. This is what came off of it. So I like them because they're already got a thing on the end of them that helped like the plastic little piece that helps you feed it through perfectly in the little holes. So I'm gonna do that and put these little beads on here. And I just painted the beads with um, two different brown colors. One's a real, like a khaki um, brown and the other one is, the um, darker brown. It kind of matches the scrapbook paper. So I thought it was perfect. And I'm just gonna, and this just making these cute little hangers like this and these raw beads just makes everything look more high end, better. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but it just makes it look a lot nicer, I think. 
So that's why I always use them. And you can actually buy the beads at Hobby Lobby now for a good price too. They have them all the time. They have them. And it's just a little hanger. And then I'm just going to stick it in the holes and that's going to be our hanger. But first, before I put the hanger on, you know me, I got to make my raggy bows. <laughs> and I want to make, I'm going to get rid of this first. I'm going to make a cute little bow for it. And then I'm going to put some greenery. So the way I make my bows, I use jute twine and I use my tiny bow dabra. And I use strips of ribbon, which is like ribbon that doesn't have wire on it. And also um, lace that I coffee stain. And I also use, um, you know, like ribbon with no wire on it like this from Dollar Tree. And then I use lace that I coffee stain. And I also use um, any type of fabric and I rip it in strips. And this is the lace I use too. So a lot of it's from Dollar Tree. Um, I mean, I get it from I get it from Dollar Tree. I get it from Hobby Lobby. I get it from um, where else? Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, mostly. I get it from. But I just make a raggy bow, and you just kind of want to just flip your fabric back and forth. That's what I do. I just flip it and make a cute little loop going back and forth with it. And you just make the bow as big as you know you want it to be on your project. I don't want it too big. Um, because I want to put some flowers on here too. So I'm going to put some a lace on here too. And this lace I actually got at, on Tamu. Their lace is really cheap. So I bought like a bunch of it and then I coffee stained it. I just added um, same part water and um, coffee and just let it like steep, for, steep inside of it for a while. Really easy. But you just loop it, loop back and forth. Really easy. Because I am not a perfect bow maker. I'm going to put some yellow in here. Because we're going to put those cute sunflowers. And that's what's going to give it a pop of color. And I'll make it look really springy. And then I'm going to go on with this. I thought this was really pretty. I think I got these at Dollar Tree, but I just think it's super pretty um, with the sunflowers on there. Now you can use your, if you have a big bow dabber, you can use that. I just use the small one because when I make my bows, they're usually not too thick. And I'm just going to put this little lace on here. I didn't even use this piece. And then I'm just going to bring up my string and tie it in the center. And I tie it in a knot. I just want to make sure it's tight. And you pull it right out like that. And then I just flip it over and I tie it in the back. I double knotted in the back. There we go. And then just cut the excess off. And now I'm just going to mess around with it <laughs> like I always do. And all I do is just pull my tails down, you know, so it looks like a bow. And then I just kind of like make this, you know, bring my little loops up. 
bring all your tails down and you just mess with it until you get it to look really super nice. And then I'm gonna put a cute little button in the middle too. And I always save like most of my tails, like if I have it too long, like these pieces, I always save them, you guys, because you can make like cute little expos. I call them expos. Expos. I think I was saying that too fast. And those are cute too for like on tiny little projects because you don't want to waste. I hate wasting. That's just me though. I can't stand wasting. Because stuff costs way too much these days. <laughs> so I always try to, like, not the tiny pieces, but, like, you know what I mean. Just the uh, the other ones. And then if, like, when you rip your fabric, if you have too many strands, you just cut them off like that. But I like mine looking rustic, so it, it doesn't bother me that much if there's a few. So like these longer ones I'll keep, but the shorter ones I'll just throw in the I'll throw in the trash. But yeah, that's how you make the cute little bows. And they are cute. And they're easy. And I like easy. Only thing is I didn't get these. <laughs> Hang on, sorry guys. I'm always I tell you, I mess with my bows like way too much. It's like, I, it just got to be just so for me. I don't know why. <laughs> but there we go. All right. So now I'm just going to bring my back up. Now this is how it's going to look in the center here. And then like that. I want to push this one down a little. It's too high up. There we go. And then I'm going to take some of this greenery. Now I get my greenery everywhere. I get it from Hobby Lobby. I get it from um, the Dollar Tree, you know, wherever there's a bargain. So I, I got these little sunflowers. I think I actually got these at the Dollar Tree. Um, and then these I got at Hobby Lobby. But I get it when they're like 50% um, off. And then um, the boxwood greenery I got at Walmart. So that's what I'm using. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue down my bow in the center here. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is put my hanger on. So I'm just going to feed my hanger through the back. I like using these little um, jute twine that already comes off the Dollar Tree rounds because they're perfect. Because you don't have to worry about stapling them. You don't have to worry about doing anything to them. They just go right on. See? They just go right on. Okay, so now I'm going to glue down my bow in the center. And then I will glue down the greenery. And I'm still messing with my bow, guys. I just need to cut this a little bit more. There we go. Trying to make it all even. So, that's better. And then... I'm going to start putting in my greenery. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down this piece. I already have these two glued together because I pulled them off of a, another pick that I had. So they're perfect. So they're just going to go like that. Only thing is I think they're a little bit too wide. So I'm going to have to cut a little bit. With my wire cutters. There we go. And then I just take it's still too, too much. I think I'm going to take one off.
I don't think we need this much. I think one should be good. They're really long. There we go. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna glue one of these down and I'm just gonna put some hot glue on it. Now you can staple these down too if you want, if you don't, you know, wanna hot glue them. You could staple them down too, but I will tell you that I've glued mine and they've never, they've never come off. <laughs> they have never come off, so they've worked out just fine with glue. I guess it just depends, you know, if you're using a good, like I use um, Gorilla Glue sticks, so they're always just fine. And then I'm going to glue the um, sunflowers. First, I'm going to put the greenery down. forgot about that. And this one we're going to have to cut down, too. thought I could cut it with my scissors, but nope. And then we're going to glue this down. I like using these little cotton pieces. I think they're so pretty. And I think they just look really rustic on here. And I used to make wreaths a lot. That was my thing. But I stopped because I didn't, like, I love still wreaths. Don't get me wrong. But I stopped making them because it's just not affordable. They're very expensive to make. And then I would have to charge a lot to sell them. And I didn't like that. So I decided not to do it. And that's when I decided to do a lot more of these rounds, you know, for your door to hang because they're more affordable. And they look pretty on your door too, so. And that looks really pretty. I'll show you guys in a second. I'm just still trying to put them on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to put these on here. Um, and I know the picture is not the greatest for you guys. I'm trying to get my camera still figured out. So you guys could see me better, but I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to glue down these two. Actually, going to make this smaller. And this is really pretty. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So I'm just putting two of these fuzzy, I'm calling them fuzzy, but they are kind of fuzzy. Um, they kind of look like cotton almost. Pieces down. Actually, it's too long. These are so long. I don't want them sticking out that much. Just a little bit. And I got so much glue down here, these ain't ever coming out. Okay. And then the greenery. We're going to take this off. Because it was too much. And glue this piece down. And then our flowers. And then this, this is done. The only thing I'm going to do is put a little um, button in the center of my bow. And that's it. That is it. Really not hard to make, you guys. And super inexpensive, too. Inexpensive. And then in the center, I have a really cute button. 
if I didn't lose it. Here it is. It's just like wooden buttons. I get these on um, Amazon. And they are in my Amazon shop. And that'll be in the description box as well. And I'm just going to put it right in the center of my bow. And it looks like a cowhide on it. So it looks really cool, the button. I was excited when I saw it in the pack. I was like, oh, look at it. It matches. Okay, guys, ready? Here it is. All done. What do you guys think? <laughs> you guys like it? I love it. So, yeah. So, like, this, I will have this in my um, Etsy shop, too. Okay, you guys? Um, and uh, you can either make it yourself, your own version. And I'd love to see a picture of it if you do. And, um, or you could buy it already made. So, yeah. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. I will be back again next Friday. So I hope to see you all here. And I want to thank you guys for coming and watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me over on Facebook too, because both platforms help me out a lot. So I appreciate it. And share the video. Okay. And I will see you guys again next Friday. Bye.